Sweet life. Chief Johnson. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Long Beach is on. You know what I'm saying? Joey Fats. Man, we in here, man. Yo. This is... This is... I, I was... When we spoke and you was like, yo, I want to be on the show. Like, lightweight. I was just... It was... It, it, it For real. Full circle moment. Because you was just saying before the cameras started rolling, like... You know, um, with like 2013, I'm an epic, and I, I I wanted to offer or did offer you a deal. Nah, it was you was offering <laughs> Yo Gotti at the same time, and this before he dropped the down in my DM record. I remember your pitch was, you young, Gotti man, he he, he a little older. I'm I, we gonna keep it a hundred. We gonna keep it a hundred. You from Long Beach, bro? Yeah, you yeah. want me to lie? Yeah, yeah, no. Nah, he like man, Gotti man, but you you young man, you bringing some new shit. We wanna. But we had a whole situation with Brian Leach and the whole ASAP shit to where it didn't fall through. And he went through with Gotti. Everybody went through with Gotti. It worked. You know what I mean? But it's just the fact, like, that's what always made me hold you in high regard. Just like, Joey Fats and Yo Gotti. Like, what type of competition is that? Like, you talk about Yo Gotti, Fab. Like, you, Joey Fats. But you really was considering it from a business aspect. And I respect it. You know what I mean? I, I was considering it from, for me, just... Everything for me is about feel, mm -hmm. like authentic authenticity and feel, right? And as far as as it relates to music, and I remember I can I can see the video to this day. It was a black and white video. You in the car, you hunched over. You the, I I remember the Lindo the whole, joint. Yeah, the whole shit. So I I remember seeing that the first time. It was like, where is he? Wherever he is, <laughs> find him. You know what I mean? And I remember going to Trick and I was like, yo, like you gotta meet this kid. Um, but you know, listen, I, I, I again prior to the cameras coming on, you were talking about, you know, where you sit as far as music and relevance and all of that. And I think that we we do ourselves a disservice when we do not take into account like what it just took for you to be sitting here today. Like you free. Mm -hmm. You know a lot of people that ain't free. Mm -hmm. You know a lot of people that ain't here from where we from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like that, and that's not some low expectation shit. I'm just talking like real life shit. And then now that you built Cutthroat, you know, this this clothing brand is valued at whatever. I don't want to but like, and then what you're doing in the city and, you know, the store and taking care of your family, you, you know, your daughter has changed your life. Like, look, man, you, 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 you're, you're doing amazing. Appreciate for real, it. for real. Appreciate That's not, it. it's, it's real shit. Cause the things that we, uh, often like my prayer is all the time is like, I ask, I ask myself to always um take a whole space for the things that we could often take for granted. Yeah. That's always my prayer. Whole space for the things that we can all that we take for granted. The little things that we take for granted. The moments just being here. There is a lot of people that are not here, like that I grew up with in Springdale, whatever, you know what I'm saying, that I hooped with at Silverado Park or that I hooped with at you know what I mean, John, me or Admiral, just wherever, like life is just constantly evolving. We, you know, we, loss is a part of life, but we're here and you have the opportunity to continue to evolve. And I think that that's an amazing accomplishment because you could be sitting somewhere and you're not, man. And I, 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 th I think you should not only pat yourself on the back, but begin to like, really take stock in what you've created and who you are so that you can pass on that to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that first and foremost. Um, you know, but just coming up where we from, you know, it's not much opportunity. Like I can't even tell you if I ever even seen a Ferrari in Long Beach. It took me to, uh, my first job was at, uh, Pacific Park, Santa Monica Pier, I ain't got no shame in that. Um, but I just was seeing affluent kids like come with their parents and kids that's around my age and seeing them enjoying life with their parents and 
I ain't never even been in no amusement park with my mama. It made me start like, I want this for myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, you get older, 21, 22. You start making a little stuff happening. I want this for my family now. You know what I mean? So that's more so what it was about, you know, then. Um, and it still is about that now. But me, I try to like, it might be a bad thing in a sense, but I find happiness in others. Like, I can't sit back and enjoy whatever I got going if I don't see somebody else enjoying this shit, too. And me being where I'm from, it's not too many people enjoying too much of nothing. So when I'm there, like, even Steven, like, that, that, like, that's my boy. That's, like, one of my best friends. But, like, it didn't start off like that. Like, he was somebody who supported me, and I just seen him and see how much love he had for me. Like, come on, we family. Like, let's do this together. Like, I ain't never been the one that really shied away from my journey because that's one thing I learned is that you got to embrace the journey. Like the goal line is for the ego. The journey is for the soul. So I knew I was, you know, adding more to my repertoire. I'm, you you got like, when I got on, Trinidad James was the biggest thing. Like all gold, everything. So you got to realize me seeing him perform at West Wing in New York and seeing all the labels go after him. Where is this thing now? No disrespect to him, but you would think somebody who they throwing millions at would still be here. So like, how I came to terms was, I started seeing like, you know, I came in through ASAP Rocky, and one thing about ASAP Rocky, one thing I remember is Forever 21 offered like a million dollars for the photo shoot. But I'm like, he like, nah. I'm like, what the fuck you mean? Like, you know what I mean? He like, I'm like, a million dollars, he like, but if I do the Forever 21s, I won't get the Dior's, I won't get that, I won't do all that, because they gonna, you did. And that's what really made me look at it from an enterprise perspective. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody, no disrespect to Flacco, but it wasn't like he had records that made, like, you go out here and you ride in these streets or anybody. Like, it was him, his persona, who really drove this machine. And that's what really made me shift from, like, some artist to some entity shit. I want to build an enterprise. You know what I mean? And me and him, and then me again, just getting older, bro, I want more for myself in, in my city, having a daughter now, meeting people like you, you know what I mean, who gambling. Um, that's out here just trying to make a way too, you know what I mean? Because whether y'all look at it that way or not, you know, you're working for somebody, but y'all always present opportunities for these kids to change their life, you know what I mean? So the fact that a full circle moment, I we're appreciate here, that. We're here years later, you know what I mean? And seeing y'all niggas still the same niggas, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, it's admirable, bro, because, you know, it's a common goal, you know what I mean? A lot of people don't see that. Everybody just want to score a touchdown, so I'm saying everybody just want to score a touchdown. Well, I'm a nigga that's just trying to get 10 yards, get to the first down. Bro. So, like, I got nine yards here. You know what I mean? I'll probably get the extra yard by the time we leave first down. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's yeah. what's up. Yo, for, for those who don't know, like, let's let's back up and, like, like so you so we can come forward. Tell them the story. Tell them early Joey Fad stories. And then, you know, uh, like you said, the ASAP Rocky thing. The, you know what I'm saying? Um... Yeah, just tell the story. Tell us the story. Uh, well, I'm from East Side Long Beach. Like I would say, I was uh, very blessed. I had uh, some brothers who stood out like Seminoles, like real strong guys to where um, they didn't want to fit in. When we first generation Long Beach, they wanted to start something for us, and they did it. So what come from that is you got the OT Genesis, you got the Vince Stables, you got the Joey Fats. So um, 2012, 2011, fast forward, um, Vince is doing music. Earl is coming back from uh, when he was abroad in Hawaii doing a little joint. I remember we in Marina Del Rey at the Internet House. This is when they like the thing. They just signed their deal. Everybody talking about it. We there. Uh, I'm I'm in the streets. Like my brother just got shot. He's in the hospital right now. But Vince got me in Marina Del Rey. Damn, this condo nice. Uh, we there, I sit in them. Everybody's talking about business. Earl come. Vince, like, we, like, Vince been around, but Vince is younger than me, so he was around, but it's just like, we try to get the bitches. We hanging with the older homies. Blah, blah, blah. Vince, he's here. But Vince made it happen. Like, really, for the city, I could say, and for me in Long Beach, uh, he really did the music shit. Um, fast forward, uh, Earl comes home. That's a whole little debacle going on. Vince and Ty, uh, Bieber King is close. This is Big Sean's cousin. Um, that's uh, Vince's DJ. But Yams was calling Cub Vince the whole time behind everybody back. Yams, sneaky ass motherfucker. 
<laughs> he calling Vince. He trying to sign Vince. But Vince, like, he got his whole thing going on with Omas. You know what I mean? This is what we're doing over here. I can't, you know what I mean? He believed in me. So he like, you should check out my cousin, though. I'm selling dope. I'm serving eight balls at Venice Beach. I'm doing what I got to do. You know what I mean? To where Yams, he started ringing my line. But what made me different than a lot of people in 2012, I was making beats, too. You know what I mean? Like, they suck to me. They still suck to me. You know what I mean? Like, they suck. It's not nothing I rap on. But I was having fun. It was artistic. You know what I mean? I was expressing myself. Yeah. And and Rocky loved it. One day, I'm coming home. I'm working in Stockroom Forever 21. I ain't got no shame in my game. If you ain't got no no hustle, you ain't hired, man, we'll get you a job, man. Ain't nothing wrong with working no job. Right. Nice. Well, I'm working at Forever 21. I'm at the Stockroom, Beverly Center. My baby mama, she come pick me up. We going back. I was sleeping in the garage, at Aston Garage. I get a call from Rocky. Man, you my favorite producer. I'm watching Peso on Wallstar. Like, me, Malik, I swear to you, bro, I'm so ahead of it when it comes to some marketing shit, bro. Is how Rocky worked is if you remember two weeks before, Krayshawn dropped Gucci Gucci. Yup, I remember the Krayshawn. Wallstar was the biggest thing cracking shit at the time. Yep. What did they do? They used a steel shot of a white woman with a grill in her mouth to where everybody was clicking it. Oh, it's a woman ASAP Rocky. You got Cray Shine that just popped two weeks later, two weeks earlier. So when they clicked it, they think it's a whole woman. But guess what? You got this nigga from New York, yeah. something different. Like that, I'm seeing, like I'm literally watching this. So when this nigga called my phone, I'm like, nah, this ain't it. Like, get off my phone, bro. Like, boom, cut, bang me back. Like, man, you my favorite producer. Like, da da. I'm like, all right, word. Like, he telling me to send him some beats. He's working on this, this is the Dubai album. I go to the garage. Make some beats, send them some beats, go to sleep. Next morning I wake up, I gotta place him with the Jody record. So that's how it started. It really happened with Vince letting Yams know who I was, that let Rocky know that I make these beats and they all tapped in. Then this is where we at now, but that's how it started. Met motherfuckers like you. Yeah, you know I mean, went on my first, I was rapping for four months. I was already on tour in Europe. Live Love ASAP tour in Europe. I was a direct support. Fur couldn't make it because that's when work first dropped and he started blowing up to where they negotiate new contracts now. We trying to get some money for all this now. Like, you know what I mean? To where they like, just bring Joey. Like, this is my first time me, right? Well, Rocky, when they did the American tour, he flew me up to Oakland. I met him there. That's when I met Schoolboy Q, Danny Brown. I'm still in disbelief. Like, what the fuck is all this shit? <laughs> you know what I mean? Boom, we do an MTV segment there. Boom, we finish that. He fly me straight to Europe. I'm direct support. I'm talking about literally when I get off stage, the curtain drop. He's coming out. And guess what? I got to go dress up and come back out with him, act like I'm part of the whole entourage. But it was, you know, you go to O2 Arena, 5,000 people. I'm a nigga from the east side of Long Beach, bro. Like, I'm just that. But that's, like, I ain't never did music. I was a football player, bro. So the fact that God blessed me with that in such a short time, like, yeah. I only could be thankful, bro, because I didn't know nothing about performing, creating rhymes. You know, an ear for music, like none of that, bro. I was gang banging and playing football, bro. So, yeah, you know I mean, it's only God, bro. Like that's why I feel like that's why I got clean, like off the lean and shit like that. Cause I feel like it was a different purpose. Me doing like peace walks and doing for the community, doing turkey drives, giving away a thousand turkeys. You know what I mean? And shit like that, and seeing the reaction from the community, I knew that's what it was about. So, what was it? Um, you know, you the, the ASAP Rocky thing, you're on tour, you're, you're producing beats. Are you still you still in the streets when you get home? Or is it like, okay, this is a real thing? Or are you still like, you know what? Like, I'm still doing me. I went to jail right after. Wow. <laughs> I, went to jail. I went to jail right after. Um, How long? I was in jail on and off 10 months. I was bailing out. They kept up my bail and shit. Um, I went to jail for a drive-by shooting in Beverly Hills, actually. It was stupid. You know, what I was able to justify was this is what needed to happen for me to realize that, like, I'm not untouchable out here. Because, you know, I was on drugs, bro. Finally started touching some money. I had a six-figure car. So I'm talking about I'm an unheard of ass nigga. This is 2017. I got songs of Playboy Cardi. Like, all these niggas is filtering through me because I'm, like, Rocky, like, protege in a sense to where they feel like they got to come to me to go through underground. You got Ian Connor working for me. Like, all these niggas to where... I'm thankful for that situation. I took my second strike, but it woke me up, and my daughter was due six months. So it was like hitting me all at once. Like, it was stressful. Like, it was a lot of times I followed myself, you know what I mean? Felt like, you know what I mean? Like, 
it wasn't worth it a lot, but it was those situations that made me realize to come back down to the norm. You know what I mean? Like I'm li- for a nigga to go from east side of Long Beach and to do music for four months to be in London and Paris and and I'm around the hottest artists in the world at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I ain't never get a chance to really like sit back and like I'm I gotta be thankful for this. It was more so like you just gotta live day by day. Yeah. But when I sat down and lost everything, I'm talking about my penthouse gone, my BMW is up for uh Auction with my bell. No, yeah. it's up with my bell. I put okay. that up. That was a write-off for my bell, because I ain't had no property. Got it. Man, you can take my car. Da da. And I come home, I ain't got nothing. I'm sleeping in my car, my first night home, and I got a daughter doing a couple weeks after that. And it just really humbled me. Like, you know what I mean? I, this is something I need to be thankful for. I got clean after that, all that type of shit happened. You know what I mean? So So how how do you, you know, you, you come home, you know, you're having this moment of reflection, realization. What are the steps you begin to walk down to change? your trajectory because it's such a hard thing like being where we're from and, and the people we surround ourselves with without turning your back on people or feeling like you're alienating people but you know you have to take these hard steps for yourself like how are you able to walk these things down to make sure that y'all you know, not going back there I gotta focus I have to change on these things the first step was realizing that I'm not worried about how nobody else feels this for me I mean, because if I felt like, you know, what the hood would think or what my homies would think or what my girl going to think, I don't think I ever would have did it. Like, this was the first time when I came home that I actually was worried about myself. You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, some of the most successful people are selfish. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I don't give a fuck about you, but it's just like I got a lot of character defects I'm trying to approach right now. And that's more so what it was. And like I said earlier, I was embracing the journey. That's how I was able to justify it. It was just like... It's so many. It's like it's so many people that we love, listen to, idolize, whatever. That didn't have no straight cut to success. It was always, you know, side streets, and that's why I came to accept. But just like this is just part of my journey and uh, being self analytical. That was the most important thing. Not to get stuck in my own ego. Like not to realize. I mean, not to think that I'm not, you know, like subjected to being analyzed and, you know, how I carry myself, you know, like, I was, I, I cared about what people thought about me when I walked into a room. I cared about, you know, the, 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 the impression I left on them. And I started thinking, like, do I want to be somebody who falling asleep standing up on opiates or do I want to be this nigga that they respect, somebody that's coming through, giving game, regardless if I'm benefiting from, benefiting, benefiting from it or not, just like, you know, extending a hand because, like, I seen a lot, like I said, from an artist perspective, I'm still struggling. But in terms of like, I can show you how to get some money easily. Yeah. I can show a motherfucker how to get some money. I can call a nigga on his phone right now. I'd change his life in Sacramento. He don't even rap no music. Like I can call cut right now. Jerry, like, Jerry ain't making money off this clothing shit. Like, but yeah, that's more so what it was. It just was like it wasn't really changing trajectory, because I'm the same nigga, like. I still crash if a nigga play with my morals and me as a man or anything like that. Just what I stand on. But I would say like the overall goal has changed. Like the overall, it ain't about going to get a big bag no more. You know what I mean? Going to get this chain and nothing. It's more so like one thing for sure, niggas going to leave. You know what I mean? And uh, I always felt like life is about working on your exit. Like, how do I want to be remembered? You know what I mean? It's not about living. I'm not worried about how you view me today. I'm worried about how you view me in the future when I'm not here to talk to you. Like, you was a solid nigga. You know what I mean? So that was more so what it was. Like, I'm trying to worry about my exit right now. Like, fuck this shit. Like, I can't compete with these niggas. Let me do this and set myself up to walk up out of here and be like, all right, peace, niggas. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gone. You know what I mean? Niggas like... Yeah, you lived it up. You know what I mean? Kevin, so. Kevin Hart said, uh, "It's about your book. It's about your book. At the end of the day, what is your book going to say? What is your, you know, what I'm saying how how is your book impacting people? You know what I mean? And so, yeah, that's that's a great that's a great frame of mind. It, like as we're sitting here chopping it, it's so crazy because like 
maybe two weeks ago, I'm I'm having a conversation with my son, or my son had a let me be my son had a conversation with me, and it was a conversation that was long overdue, um, and he was just very, he was very, uh, he was very direct in how. Uh, he was very direct and like, hey, look, like to people outside this door that live outside our home, they may think this and that, but this is how I feel. This is how I think I've been made to feel. It was a, it was, it was like one of the most sobering conversations I've ever had, and it was initially, I, as he was talking to me, I was getting defensive. Like that, you know, because he's talking about me. He's like, this is how I feel, you know, and I was I, I began to get defensive and um, I had to about ego. I had to step back. I had to allow him, not allow him, but I wanted to receive what he Man, was saying. You him. Nah, I had to receive what he was saying. I don't. We never had no, you know. Me nah, he was gonna beat you up. That's why. Nah, he was gonna <laughs> rough you up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> definitely, <laughs> not, it's, it's definitely not happening. But nah, it was just more about. I wanted to receive what he was saying, and I wanted to, I wanted to um, really hear him, so that we could, uh, our relationship could evolve. You know what I mean? Because it has evolved. He's, he's no longer. I can't be like, come on, let's go. Da, da, da. You know, this kid is this kid's a senior in high school. You know what I'm saying? So it was like the conversation though was just he put the mirror up to me. And I It was uncomfortable? Yo, but it was needed. Yeah, yeah. It was super needed. And he was just he was just like, yo, this is this is how I feel. He wasn't blaming me for anything. He was just saying, This is how I, I feel, perceive man. it. Now we can talk about it, but this is how I perceive it. You can't you can't just deflect or you can't say shut me. You can't shut me down and say, this isn't, that, that's not true. You know what I mean? You, I had to hear him out. And it was a, and it was an uncomfortable, it was an uncomfortable thing, but it was, um, it's, it's another part of my journey. And even in a couple of weeks, that conversation, as we have on here, it, it was transformative because I was like, okay. There, there's, there's validity in these things because I've heard these things from other people. But he was like, "Yo, you didn't think I've been watching you all this time?" Well, that's what usually where the most growth is. is yeah, in, in the uncomfortable and the uncomfortable. So for you, like, like you know, being in the back of the car, your first night out, knowing your child's about to come, you know. And 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 you you got again you got to walk down these things you like yo I can't sit here I can't stay here this ain't where I'm staying so as you begin to like sort of walk these things down how does how does that all lead us to like the store and and the clothing line like because that's that that's a different pivot than I you know what I mean. I remember hearing about, I was like, I think I saw you at Complex, honey. He was like, yo, I got the store. And I was like, huh? And he was like, nah, I, I bought proper. And we know proper. You know, you from the city. You like, you bought proper? Used to be across from Uncle Al's fish market in the barbershop? Oh, okay, what? How do how do we get there? Uh, shit, God, to be honest. Um, this wasn't something that was in my foresight that I just seen, like, I'm going to get proper. Like, uh, the cutthroat stuff, man, I can't explain it enough. It's a lot of things that I didn't see that I was doing at the time, but going back and looking back, like, even from like guerrilla marketing standpoint, it's a lot of shit I was doing that I ain't know what the fuck it was. It's just more so like, I'm just being me. And I was the same thing with the cutthroat shit. Um, the products, I don't, I don't know if the camera was rolling, but just me and that quality product, for half the price. Like you got people that's doing the same shit I'm doing, 150, 200 a shirt, charge them $60. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't be charging that much if I ain't had no overhead. I have to pay for no store or do all that type of shit. I don't look to break the bank for nothing because I know that I, I'm going to find my way. That's how it always been. It always been like that. To where like I'm not, 
I just rather see you in a cutthroat shirt. Like, I ain't even, like, because it's all promotion. It's all full circle. I see you in a cutthroat shirt. Motherfuckers go, go look up cutthroat. They're going to see Joey Fats. Eventually, they do enough research. They're going to see, oh, Joey Fats did this. Well, let me check out his music. You like it or hate it. You know what I'm saying? So it all, it's all full circle. But I think what got me there is uh, I did a peace walk uh, in Long Beach. Uh, it was when uh, when the food vendors, from the yep. vendors, it was a huge racial thing going on in Long Beach. I was staying in Koreatown at the time. But I got godsons, I got nephews yeah. that all go to school in Long Beach. So it's making me have to pay attention um, to like, you know, my nephews go to school over here. But I'm talking about black people beating up Mexican kids, Mexican dudes beating up retarded black kids, uh, challenged black kids to where it was like, I'd be damned if I don't. Like it's time for me to do something. But I'm talking about like I swear to God, God can strike me down right now with my daughter. I swear to God. When I did it, when I first said I was gonna do that, it was calls coming in saying Mexican mafia, green line, you like they was trying to stop me from doing it, like so bad. I'm telling them, I was like, bro, we good, like we good. Whatever comes with it is what comes with it. Like, you know what I mean? But I'd be damned if I sit back. But I'm telling you, like, like a thousand people showed up, bro, and walked with me from ocean to Artesia. Walked. I ain't never even walked that much in Long Beach by myself. <laughs> so the fact I'm walking with a bunch of strangers that's supporting this cause, I'd be damned if I don't. I'll be like, I ain't never seen myself to be like, you know, no voice or nothing or nothing like that, but I'd be damned if I don't because I know my intentions. I know I ain't got no malicious intent. You know what I mean? It's all like, you know, I, that's all I try to do is like motivate somebody. You know what I mean? Because I'm not somebody who went through like uh, school or nothing like that. So only thing I do is just show you where I've came from the tools that I had. And I, I would say I came pretty damn far, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not giving you this, like what to, what what good is your utility of knowledge if you don't share it? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just try to share that utility. And me being this person, this born again person since I got to jail, that's what got me the story. It wasn't me being Joey Fats or a rap I put out or it was just me being righteous. Me understanding who supported me is having they back. That's all it was. And when I opened at that store, oh they was there. And still there to this day. Like if I open the store, they're gonna be there. Like there. Coming to buy everything, make sure them doors stay open. Like to where it's 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 mutual. It's not like, you know what I mean, I'm offering them something or nah bro. I, like I let them know all the time, but I feel like that's why I, this thing is working for me because I've always been transparent. Like, I'm not some nigga that's just acting like I'm out here selling hella bowls, selling dope, or making this X amount of money off music. You know what I mean? I'm not, I ain't never been that nigga. I always let motherfuckers know I'm thankful. You know what I mean? Because that's where I come from. You know what I mean? Like, to where it, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, oh, I ain't got the Ferrari I've been always dreaming about my whole life, but <laughs> I'm doing pretty good, bro. Like, I grew up on Section 8, mom on the county, so it's just like, I'd be doing her a disservice to be complaining about where I'm at right now. You know what I mean? So How is your mom? She great. She turned 60 today. Today her 60th birthday. Happy birthday, moms. Shelly Root. <laughs> there it um, is. With with the brand, you know, how long is the brand? Twelve years. Twelve years. Um, and just growing it brick by brick. Like how how's that been? Like just watching it, you know, with, with the mindset that you have where, you know, it was never Never sought out to like break the bank, or I'm pretty sure you've been offered better than like... music. Better than music. It's the best feeling ever. Cause a motherfucker gonna rap caviar and hear your song and don't know what the fuck you look like. But somebody walking up that street in some cutto, guess what? I don't want you to know who I am, but look, you fly, nigga. <laughs> it's so many times like what really made me really chill uh -huh. on Second Street in Long Beach. It's a place where everybody go drink. You know, I like I got the story, so I started doing Long Beach shit again. A lot of like a couple times, I, a lot of times, I see somebody walking to cut those shit, and I greet them. That shit hard. Look at me and keep walking. I'm like, oh, they don't know who the fuck I am. I'm like, this how you want it to be. Like I'm, it's great. Like I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Like that's why I knew it was bigger than me. It was more so like it spoke for the city. Like, yeah. And I remember growing up like uh, 99, 98, MTV Spring Bling was at the beach. They used to do that type of shit there. They don't do that. Like Long Beach is dead right now. But 
It's up to niggas like us, man. Savvy Third, Joey Fast, Vince Staples, man. You got OT Genesis. You got P Nice. Shout out P Nice. Uh, you got a lot of people at DW. You know, you got a lot of people that's out there trying to make some. Young boy from TDE. Oh, uh, uh, Ray, Ray, what's cut name? Ray, shout out cut from TDE. It started with Ray. Vaughn. Ray Vaughn. There you go. He nice. He a good rapper. Yeah, he a good rapper. Um, Give me on. Who? Give me on. Oh, Give me on. Yeah. The city and um, the importance of that, and we were talking earlier about, you know, the blood, sweat, tears, money that you poured into the Cutthroat headquarters to not only for your retail space, but for a hub, you know, for for um, for people that look look like us and and other people to come and be a part of that. You know, what was what was the vision behind the actual brick and mortar? When you started, when you went in there and you're like, okay, I got to build something. Shit, it's 3,000 square feet. Shit, there's only so much you can do with a fucking storefront. I knew I couldn't uh, make all that be the sales floor. And how it was sectioned, it was sectioned off in chambers already. You know what I mean? You had the, the, the sales floor. You got a, a, like a, a back, like, I don't know what you call it, break room. Then you got the stock room. And upstairs, you got like... The office, and then it's a whole nother room up there. So that's like five rooms. So when I eventually, when I when I initially got the spot, it was more so like I wanted to make this like a safe haven. You know what I mean? Like, cause I grew up uh, the stores on First and Elm. I grew up on Seventh and Olive, which is a mile and a half, two miles. But me growing up in Long Beach, proper is where you would come and get your shit. So it was just like. I couldn't, I never, like, growing up, me knowing that, like, me even knowing I can go to proper and get the fly shit, be the flyest thing in high school, I couldn't afford it. I ain't never bought a pair of shoes from proper, me and my adolescent years. So for me to go back and get that spot, it was big for me on some ego shit, that shit that I was telling you about. It's good and bad, but that ego oh. shit, but also, like, ain't no telling how many other kids or people feel this same way I felt. So I wanted to make the space, you know, okay for everybody, whether you got money to spend or not, or whether you got food to eat, because there's plenty of homeless people we take care of around there. You know, it's a lot of things that we do, uh, turkey drives, like, it's just endless things that we do, like, just for families and stuff like that, that uh, we don't really look to be credited for, just more so, like, it's our community, you know what I mean? Like, and I got... Bunchy Carter tatted on my back. Yeah, you know I mean, like I'm a firm believer into the, you know, the Panther Party. You know, uh, George Jackson is like somebody who I idolized growing up, and how he thought his train of thought. So I always been for my people, and I'm not saying that from like a, a racial standpoint. It's more so like a, a class standpoint. And uh, whatever race you fall into in that class, I'm supporting you. And and just so happened in Long Beach, it's more so like the minority is the black and Hispanic. So that's what I wanted to do there. I wanted to bridge the gap because if you know Long Beach is heavy yeah. tension between blacks and Hispanics. So I'm like, this is the opportunity for me to bridge the gap and also create this uh, space for these kids and anybody that's need some place to go, you know what I mean? Rather than be in the streets. Like, I don't give a fuck if you come there and say you ain't got a place to sleep that night. I'll probably fuck around staying there with you that night. That's just how I am. Like, we gonna figure it out. Like. And I feel like that's what's been keeping me here, you know, like God, you know, God pay attention to a lot of stuff, bro. And I've been righteous my whole journey, you know what I mean? Even if it costs me possible deals or whatever, it's just like, I stand for something, bro. Like, yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative, man. I, I, I met motherfuckers like you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I still remember going to Tricky House. I still remember. We had Tricky on the show. Uh, that's, that's, we had Tricky on the show. Him and uh, Kiki Palmer. That's a big moment for me right there. Oh man, big a, moment. That was a big moment for me being from the being from the West Side of Long Beach and walking in, and they be like, "Yo, you're the vice president of Epic Records." That, you're like, "Wow, <laughs> like for real?" You know what I mean? Like, so I I get it all, man. I get it. Advocacy, right? Advocacy, yeah, always like. Hey, first of all, 
Stop these niggas from being so modest. They got me at Dream Hotel right now. I mean, big chicken sandwiches. <laughs> these niggas act like this shit regular, fool. Like, even me getting a little something to myself. I'm at Dream Hotel doing a podcast right now, eating. You know what I mean? Like, it's not regular, fool. Like, especially me being a nigga from, from not, like, this not regular. You should see all the plates on the motherfucking, ain't no telling how much money they done blew on this fucking food budget. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> nah, nah, that's good, man. We just, you know, for us, you know, um, it's just another paradigm of of the walk and the journey. And, you know, I think we've all been through so much in life and career. But you said it earlier, like, what's what's the purpose of all that? Your tool, your toolkit and the knowledge if you're not going to facilitate and spread that around and this is I think our opportunity to do that but we're also learning a lot also too being able to sit with people like yourselves and people like Tricky and Kiki and you know amazing chefs and learn about their journey and really what it takes because I think we glaze over and the world now glazes over the work and the sacrifice and the faith and those things because, you know, they're like, well, what car do you drive? Well, how do I just, I just want to know how to get a Range Rover. I just want to know how to get a big house. But there's so much behind that. And it's, you can do it, but there are, it's work. It's work, it's sacrifice. And I'm working know. right now because I want to jump both of y'all. Because <laughs> y'all had a chance to save my life. They both could offer me deals. But when you look at it from a perspective of just like everybody trying to just do something, you don't take it personal. They got me here on their show, they could have easily said no. So like this is work in the sense that's why I'm bringing it back to it. Just like me, like you got a lot of people out here that really believe in that dream so much to where somebody that I know, personal relationships with a nigga like him, why can't I get this deal? You know what I mean? It might be like, man, fuck Malik, this nigga don't believe in me. But when it's really not like that. I got to bring successful acts through this label to make sure that my job is secure and all this type of shit to where, but me being a young folk, 21, 20 at a time, I ain't see that. So like, um, that's that just go be like, cause you know, people glorify the shit on camera all the time, all the good things, but this is something I'm battling with myself with right now. It's just like, you two motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you two motherfuckers. But I, I'm thankful though, that's part of the journey though. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't have it no other way. I wouldn't, like, I'm. if I had a chance still, to take that deal that you offered me, I would probably still, like if I knew that my life would turn out like this, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it. I got way so much freedom. Yeah. Can lay up with my daughter. I was at Sky Zone yesterday. You telling me to go to the store, get you some pants. Malik, fuck you. I'm with my daughter right now. <laughs> I have that freedom. You know what I mean? Like, And I wouldn't have it no other way, but me bringing that up is just like, it's continuous work. It's not something that's just like, Cause we come so we we come from such a fucked up background. We don't realize we so fucked up. Yeah, I mean, you take a lot of shit personal and shit like that to where like, if I knew that I'd be on a fucking podcast with both of you motherfuckers, <laughs> I it'd probably blow my mind. Like nah, nah. And then to hear you say, oh, I don't think I want to deal with the music industry in that capacity. It's it's uh. For those who who pay attention and really try to take gems from shit, you know what I mean. It's like it says a lot, you know, about this type of dream that we chasing. Yeah. Like I was just telling the homie like the other day, like, but I've been doing music twelve years. I lost all my twenties to this shit. If I knew it would take twelve years, I'd have tried to be a doctor. Some, some that took a lot of education. Cause twelve years, nigga, <laughs> to still be a felon, nigga, <laughs> to still still be hot, like, bro, like. I would have tried to do something with myself. And that's right. Bro. But you've done it. Not yet. You want to know why? I'm with the homie the other day. It's a 70 year old woman crossing the street, fresh off work. I don't got no 401k. I ain't got no retirement plan. So the money that I'm making right now, I got to figure out how to make this work when I'm 70, 80. Not to mention, I got a daughter to make sure she's good when she's 50, 40. So it's just like, yeah, I'm achieving something now, but talk to me when I'm 70 and my my daughter is good. I'm not having to work at Walmart as a greeter or nothing like that. Ain't no telling how it's gonna look. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a nigga that prepared for the worst, but me doing it is doing it to that capacity. I'm doing it for right now. You know what I mean? I'm good right now. 
I'm I'm very good right now, but ain't no telling how this shit go. You got cancel culture out. You got all type of shit out. Ain't no telling. I might say the wrong motherfucker. Don't let it be on this podcast. <laughs> and I'm broke. <laughs> and guess what? I'm blaming y'all motherfuckers again. Malik! <laughs> nah, man. Great, man. We good. We nah, good. man. We good. No. Um, you 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 pretty heavy into into whips, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What's your what's your favorite? Man, I I like G bodies. I got I got a lot of cars, bro. I got a eighty seven T type Buick Regal, um, eight hundred horses out the V six. I got a eighty seven El Camino LS three, done top to bottom, rear end trans, four hundred eighty trans stage two. Uh, got seventy nine uh, Malibu powder blue twenty two inch forty. I got a forty sponsorship. I go through the, like them so much to buy rims from another yeah. car. They just give them to me for free now at this point. <laughs> no cap, literally. Yo, him, you, him, you, him, you, him Caleb, and, and currency. When, when you gonna do? Ain't car- nobody fucking with me unless it's Ross. I'm a, I'm gonna put that out there. Currency, Larry. I don't care about the nigga buying no Ferrari, whatever. He that shit cute. That shit look good. I got old schools that cost that much though. Like literally, like out the wrapper old schools, you gotta take the plastic off. And look at oh, you got that in here? I'm dead ass serious. You go to Miles right now, like you see him. He's there. It's like that. It's really like it's that. Really like that. It's really like that. We're gonna do a car show. Never. You ain't doing it. We do you ain't pulling up at Ross's car show. <laughs> it, it would be nice. But if I lose, I'm going broke because I gotta come with something better. <laughs> I can't do nothing like that. That's why you ain't gonna see me with no chain on or nothing. Cause a rapper gonna come out with some shit that's big as the Dream Hotel. Guess what? I'm gonna go broke trying to get it. <laughs> right, look, I gotta get something bigger than motherfucking Capitol Records building, nigga. That's only how we go. That's that. That's another thing I've accepted. I just can't get. I'm cool with my lane. You know what I mean? But currency, I get him run for his money. He trying to buy my cars right now. <laughs> they can't have them. They're not for sale. Sorry, Kerr. <laughs> Sorry, Spitter. You ain't, you ain't Him and Caleb. Um, you just dropped some, some new music, right? Yeah, September. September. I got some new shit coming. I got an album with Harry Frog that's dropping. Dope. I got an album with uh, Polly Boy. Um, those both done already. They done top to bottom. But I'm a summertime nigga. I've been getting in shape. I'm trying to get my pecs out there. When I hit, when I hit outside, when I jump out the G body, Emily, I got flexed the chest. You we from the West Coast, cuz I got to flex the chest. And I'm gonna oil myself up like Tookie too, cuz. I'm gonna come out flexing out the Elko. Come on. Ain't no ain't, Driving ain't, no, ain't nobody safe. Ain't nobody safe. Ain't nobody safe. Ain't nobody safe. So I've been recreating myself, getting ready for summer. So the passion out. for the music is still there? Yeah, yeah. I like I, I like it. I like it. It's like a puzzle. Like, like I said, I'm a struggling artist. You know, I'm a struggling artist. But still completing the song, it's the best feeling. Like, it's 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 good to see something go from nothing to something and, and hear what it sounds like. But you got to hear new shit, man. You know, the same shit I'm talking to you about y'all now, like to you about now, is what's in the music. It's not like I'm somebody, like I'm talking about the same shit. Like, yeah. oh, man, pull up I, to the I house. wish y'all. I don't pull up to the house Bro, to what? the music. Come on, we can go swimming, heated pool, I barbecue. <laughs> All that, no pork though. No pork. No pork. No pork. But man, I, I got some shit for y'all to hear, man. Whether like, I feel like I can compete. I don't think nobody rap better than me over here. I just keep it a book. Ain't nobody not a, you know, Kendrick, he complex now. Cud like an Eminem now. So <laughs> Cud don't count because Cud want to do all the, the dip a dip. But in terms of like, nah, nobody. Like not not one person over here fucking with me. You got to think about it. I got on through the East Coast niggas. You got niggas like Alchemist looking at me like, where you from? Like, yeah, I can, I can talk that shit. It's easy. 50 Cent, my favorite rapper, man. You know what I mean? Like, so I step in that room, it's, you know what I mean? Nah, but <laughs> nah, I want y'all to hear some shit. The shit I got with uh, Harry Fraud, it, it, it's dope. Lyrically, it's dope. It's super dope, but just a little slow. You know how that boom bap shit yeah. goes. Do you feel, um, you know, as an artist, I know artists release music and there's pressure, right? Do you feel less pressure because yeah. you have, you know, Cutthroat is successful, you're happy, you're raising your daughter, you're the man, you want to be you walking in it. Do you feel less... No, because you got to think about, like, where did it all come from? 
and they come up here doing doing clothes. All oh, this shit stemmed from the music. You know what I mean, so once again, that would be a disservice to the people who passed before me, the yams and all this type of shit to feel like I can just go out here and say whatever and just put it out and whatever comes up is going to come up. And I feel probably more pressure now that I'm about to be 32 years old. What we was talking about our culture aging people. Mm-hmm. I ain't got that much time, bro. I like rapping wise to where I don't look corny. You know what I mean? So like more pressure now. You know, 21, you know, I'm, like I said, I was on tour ASAP Rocky. Well, don't worry about trying to hit something. I was like, uh, Kylie Jenner 18th birthday party. I was thinking about that the other day. Like, damn, <laughs> I might be a celebrity. <laughs> Kylie Jenner shit. This is dynamic. Nah, hey. Chloe was looking at me like she wanted to eat me. I'm like, the crib from Long Beach? <laughs> Come on, Kyle. <laughs> The crib from Hey, Chloe was looking like she wanted and yeah, she stayed next to James Hurt. I'm like, oh baby, I might be the catch up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Nah, but I feel way more pressure. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting older. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to a conversation I was having with y'all about the older lady. Just trying to obtain some, you know what I mean? Like Really obtain some, you know. I what I got my portfolio. I got now cool, but we we out for more. We trying to get more. Yeah, man. So I don't even know where to take it with you, cause I, you know what I mean. Like again, I think you covered everything. That's that's the thing. You're an open book. Yeah, I be talking too much. I ain't gonna lie. Nah, you just an open book. You transparent, and that's good. You know I'm happy saying? to be here, though. That's the thing. It's, Appreciate it. This, this, this is a stage for me. Nah, it's a stage it's good, to be here man. with y'all two, with y'all two motherfuckers. Nah, <laughs> you can go back to your DM right now. I'm in that motherfucker faithfully, nigga. Check this out, nigga. Look what I'm doing now, nigga. And you, you already know. Since you vanished from the whole face of there, and I've been looking for you. Crazy. You lucky I ain't find you on Facebook. I'd have been talking all type of shit. <laughs> Fuck you, Malik Rashid. You don't know how I feel about you. <laughs> nah, but uh, it's a it's a full circle moment with y'all, man. Like even just talking to y'all as an adult now. When I met you, I was 21, 22 years old. You know, I'm an adult, but I'm still a kid. So to be 32 going on 32 and speaking with y'all now, it's definitely one of the moments that's uh. Gonna shade me for how I look in the future, for sure, for sure. It's one Yo, of those So today's your mom's sixtieth. Sixtieth. Um you well, you touched on this earlier, so before we get out of here, I wanna I wanna touch on this again. What what is it that you want them to say about about Joey when, when you leave the room? Uh he was an honest person, transparent, righteous. Uh, that's all I ever want to be is righteous. I don't want to wrong you to get to where I want to go. Even if it takes me to see you riding around in that big GT63 AMG and I'm in a Honda, I'm going to greet you. i see you. You know what I mean? I, I, that's what I want. I want motherfuckers to know I work, not just for monetary gain. That's not like, even when you're thinking like the whole Nipsey shit, like, he had Maybachs, bulletproof BMWs, storefronts. He did so much for the community, but ain't nobody talking about that. Everybody talking about the game and you know how much of an honest person he was and the transparency. He wasn't talking about how much money he had, and that's how I want to be. It's not. I don't want like you know a man is only remembered by what he do for his people. It's not about what he what he obtained and the money. So I won't, like, it'd be cool, like, yeah, Joey had a little money, but how big would a D go? Man, I was down bad, and Joey, you know what I mean? Like, da da goes a long way. You know, I'm not looking for accolades to get patted on the back, but that's how I want to be remembered. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be remembered as somebody who just, who really just fought for the people, like, really, no matter what, whether it put me in bad spots or not, like, somebody who was there, somebody who you can call on. Somebody who's gonna be there that's gonna go to bat for you, like, you know what I mean? So that's what it's about, man. I'm not, oh, oh, first and foremost, I wanna be known as a good father to my daughter. So that's the biggest thing. Yeah. I got a little girl, man. So it's, it's, uh, I'm a single father. So that's like something that really 
make me analyze myself daily. It's just like, I got, you know, you got a little dude, you know what I mean? You say it would be tough, what's up, little nigga? I got a little girl, when you, when they don't have something, they become vulnerable. You know what I mean? Looking for that is another man and I refuse. So yeah, that's a constant daily reminder. Um, but yeah, man, like I just want to be remembered by somebody who's righteous, bro. Like no matter what, I'm not gonna wrong nobody. I'm not gonna sit and lie to you. Pull up some facade. This is what it is. This is where I'm trying to go. Either you can support it or you don't. But you see, ten years later, who's still here? Come on, man. Ten years later, Malik. Ten years later. Ten years. <laughs> ten yeah. years later. Uh, where, where can people um, check out more? Come to the store first and foremost. Yeah, you know I mean, y'all niggas can check it out on Instagram, Twitter, all that type of shit. But I want to see you in person. You ain't gotta buy no clothes. Just come chill. Whoop your ass in Madden. Whoop your ass in NBA. Anything niggas want to get their ass whooped in? Guess what? I got the belt. <laughs> I'm whooping ass. So just pull up to the store. If you can't pull up to the store, man, Joey Fats, Cutthroat LA. You know what I mean? Whether you support the music or not, just look at the message. You know what I mean? It might relate to you, something you can confide in, something you can hold yourself on to to keep you going. You know what I mean? To where you're going. So, I'm not forcing no music down nobody's throat, man. We here just to enjoy this shit, man. There it is. Chief Johnson, Joey Fats, Malik Rashid, Sweet Life. Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Shout out Zach. But see, they too old for that, cuz. <laughs> they don't know about no Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Hey, 